Hello everybody, welcome to a special Walking Dead video. This is going to be my episode 100 celebration special. And yes, you're probably wondering why the hair, I am. I will address the mullet in a second. But this is a video, this is when I posted the video ye yesterday about fear. This is the video that I said was, was going to be coming. It's... My kind of like predict, you know, predictions for season eight. What I'm feeling, that, you know, is going to happen in the first ep ep the 100th episode tomorrow. Can't believe it. I've been watching a little bit of the marathon today, whatever, and yesterday, and the past few days to get, you know, pumped up even more. Uh, and also, I did finish season three of Fear. I will get those videos out some point during the week. But I did want to get this one out first before the premiere. I did promise I would showcase some stuff, so. Let's start with that, shall we? First off, <coughs> as I mentioned in my last video, I, w I did go to New York Comic Con. I went on the Saturday. And I wore this mullet with my Virginia's for Lovers t shirt. I'm sure many of you have seen that. I'm just not wearing it today because. Baseball playoffs, so maybe in a future video I'll wear this. Maybe if Eugene has something big in an episode. Negan. Eugene, also known as Negan. I know it's not, you know, exact show accurate, it's, but it's a multi mul 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 So I thought that was cool. Like, I wanted to cosplay something, but wanted to kind of keep it simple as, as best I could. I did go as a governor one year, but me and my, me and my girlfriend, we did the Virginia Ish for Lovers thing. We both wore a mullet, so. I thought it went over really well, because we both had the shirt from stopping through in Virginia, so that's the mullet. That's why I'm wearing it, and I will wear it for this video, as annoying as it can be. And as hot as it can be with it now. But I actually got it for another occasion. I had to wear it, I had to wear it for something. And I decided to keep it. Lo and behold, I wound up needing it for something else. So I'll probably end up holding on to it in case, in case I want to go as Eugene again. Eugene. So first, I would like to showcase this little fella. This is the... This was a New York Comic Con exclusive Funko Pop. It's Doherty Boy. On the back, it has the most recent editions. We have Father Gabriel, Rosita, Carl. Who this Carl should have a bandage on his eye. That was a obvious miss opportunity there. We have Rock and Lobster Daryl. Jump over here to Jesus and Negan, which I also have. I've showcased that before, but I have Dwight and Negan right near each other, obvious reasons. And I also have Lucille, which I know you've seen. That I got at Comic Con in 2014. And Big Guns. I got my little Merle signed. Yay! Yes, Michael Rooker was there and he signed. My Merle Dixon pop. Cool dude. Really really nice guy. Really nice to <coughs> finally meet somebody from The Walking Dead, even though he he's not on it anymore. He's always he will always be Merle <laughs> to me. I mean, even seeing him in Guardians of the Galaxy, still very similar characteristics. So I thought those would be cool to show you. Oh, Merle also came out with the governor. Prison Yard Rick Grimes. There's Merle and Riot Gear Walk, Prison Guard Walker, Riot Gear Walker, and there's Full Up Merle. Merle actually was the first pop figure I ever collected, so having it signed was just completed my collection. I wasn't able to get pictures with him. 
However, I did take some pictures of him on on when I was on the line because he did not did not did not do table selfies, and I wasn't able to do both autographing and pictures. So I went with autographing <coughs> because while he was doing pictures, I was at the Archer panel, which was awesome, by the way. And what else, what else? I also have little Merle. Yeah. Hold on one second. I also could have brought this and had him sign it, but I felt having him sign the pop was bigger. So I got this. Where did I get? Where did I get this from? I think I got it at Think Geek. I believe I got it at Think Geek. They also sell a fake Daryl crossbow and a Michonne sword, as well as the new Lucille bats, the full scale replicas, as opposed to the one I got, which is only a partial replica. So, yeah, I felt the pop was the best thing to get signed for several reasons. That's the whole thing that got me started with the collecting them, and I wanted to keep up with that. I wanted to get that signed. I'm working on getting a case for it so I can keep it in pristine condition. But, yeah, I think that's going to cover it for Comic-Con. I covered the news about the <coughs> Fear crossover. Oh, and they also did make a Merle Dixon Walker, but that's... An exclusive, and it's like way, it's like it's really expensive. I just saw because I buy a lot of these things that they always come in my recommendations on Amazon, and it was like two hundred forty-five dollars, and I'm not spending two hundred forty-five dollars for a pop figure unless it's signed by the entire Walking Dead cast, and I know it's official. So that being said, I really like that. I'm really glad I got to get something signed by somebody from The Walking Dead. And, yeah, I look forward to maybe getting a photo op. Hopefully he goes continues to go to these Comic Cons in the future. Or I, I plan to go to Walker Soccer Con at some point in the future, and I know he always goes to those. He's going in December, but the tickets are sold out at this point, basically, so... Maybe next year. Maybe the cruise. I'd like to do the cruise. I don't know if, if anybody's been to the cruise. Let me know how it is. Looks cool to me. But Okay, so I think... Uh, the badge, the Com Comic-Con badge is Rick. It's just Rick, a close-up of Rick's it's like bearded Rick. For the Saturday pass. I only went on the one day. Maybe next, maybe next year I'll go with like go like a, like a two day pass or something. You know, to make make even more out of the experience. Okay, so now that I have the Comic Con stuff out of the way, let's get into season eight. Big season. The entire season is basically going to be all at war. I'm. That is what I am assuming. I believe that's the case. Because I, they already basically confirmed that we will not see Heath this season. They did say we will see him again. So Heath is not dead. Spoiler alert. But the likelihood of us seeing him in season 8 is very low. So I'm guessing that we are going to see him season 9. Maybe the end of season 8 they'll tease him. Because they're not done filming those episodes yet. I don't even know. I don't know when they start filming the back half. I think sometime in October, because they start in like May, like beginning of May, with the first eight, and then the second eight are in fall, sometime in the fall. So I don't have any notes for this. I just I'm going to full my thoughts impromptu. Here you go. I'm expecting a big episode from episode 100. My Expectations are high. Am I expecting a character to die in it? Ooh, that's a tough one. It's so hard to predict when a character is going to die, with the exception of like situations like Sasha, things like that. I'm like, okay, she's dead one way or another. But 
It's tough to say. Rick's safe, Negan's safe, Carl, Michonne, Daryl, Morgan. I really, I really don't know. I honestly don't know. I they're gonna start off with the bang. That I know. And there's a lot going on in the trailer. Daryl's doing a little drive-by. There's a lot of Shiva action. The group's band together. They're wearing the armbands. I'm guessing each community has is a sign, has a different color, so that you're out. You you see somebody with the our man, you know, it's a good guy and not one of the saviors or somebody from a different community because they're still content, they still have to contend with the garbage pail kids. You know, the, the old freaking trash scavenger people riding around on bicycles and garbage trucks holding umbrellas. <coughs> they gotta deal with those people in addition to the saviors. So hopefully the Oceanside community will help out beyond just letting them have their guns. That'd be a nice addition. We will see them again. I, I'm, I'm going out on a limb. It's pretty certain we'll see them again. But right away, I'm reading the synopsis for the first episode. Right out of the gate, they're taking the fight to Negan. So it looks like they're going at him. They're coming up with a plan to take the fight to... Negan to the kingdom. Because every time they've been on more on the def defensive end, fighting Negan off, now they're going to go to the kingdom. We've seen the kingdom. They've, and people who have read the comics know how big it is. Not the kingdom, sorry. Sanctuary. We've seen it. It's huge. So the Kingdom, Alexandria, and the Hilltop will be fighting. Sorry, I crossed things in my brain. Mix them up. Sorry. So they will be taking the fight to Negan at the Sanctuary. And it's huge. It can withstand types of you know, sieges and things of that nature. So they're going to have to have a really good solid plan to get through. Plus with Eugene, who's full-blown Negan at this point, is on their side. He's fortifying it. He has the walkers covered with the molten metal. Do you want to get covered in molten metal? That's exactly how you get covered in molten metal. <coughs> I don't know. I still think Eugene is such a self- Preservationist, how you say it? He's all about himself. You know, that he always surrounded himself with big tough people, and then he saw what Negan did to the toughest person he saw, and he changed. He had really high hopes. You know, Abraham told him he's a survivor, and then to see this man who he idolized taken out. And one, two, three. His whole world shifts at that point. That's the that's the turning point for him. So until the war looks like it's in clear favor of Rick and his group, Eugene is staying quiet. But Negan is a little bit suspicious about Sasha. How did Sasha die? I don't think he quite buys Eugene's explanation. So we'll have to see how that pans out. And yes, I've seen the opening scene. It's mostly stuff from the trailer. Rick giving his speech. I've seen the scene with Carl. That mimics the first scene of the the first shot of the series. Carl driving up to get gas. Rick driving up to get gas. So Carl doesn't run into a little child walker that. Yeah, many people forget the walkers were um, seemed to be a little bit more intelligent back then. Like I don't know if I could say intelligence, but you remember that child walker picked up a teddy bear. This is a walker. It's not alive. It's not a person. It's not. There's no memory in here. But this 
Walker child picks up a teddy bear. Now, what compels her to pick up the teddy bear? That's something that I'm sure has been discussed many time, many a time. And I have not discussed that in a video, but the whole season is full of different nuggets showcasing the varying degrees of Walker intelligence, for lack of a better word. Morgan's wife opening the doorbell when other walkers are just bumping into things and just wandering around. There's nothing drawing her to it. No light, no sound, they're quiet, but she keeps going up to the door, opening, trying to open the doorknob, and looking in like she knows, like she knows that place. And the walkers climbing the fence, that's something that they haven't done in recent seasons. They can go upstairs, but they can't, they don't climb. Yes, outside the prison, they climb on top of each other, but they weren't climbing the fence. These walkers climbed the fence fast and jumped over it and pursued Rick and Glenn. And not to mention the one that, one, one that picked up a rock and threw it and smashed it against the window. Walkers now in the show aren't doing this. So. So, who's that person that Carl is talking to in that scene that mimics the opening scene of the episode of the series it just freezes before Carl says hand in the air whatever he says so I'm really hoping that we have a big episode it's gonna be huge it's a the 100th episode and it's only gonna get bigger from here now it's the producer's job to really upsell the episode, really up the expectations for it, and say, oh, this is, because they do it every season. Oh, this season is going to be bigger, it's going to be better. Usually, the, you know, each season is just built on the previous one and turns into what many may think is big, better than the previous one. I don't know, I really like season three. I thought three was better than four. Maybe people didn't like season three. That's just my opinion. I like season three. And I like season seven. And six. I like every season. You know, I know a lot of people don't like the farm, but I would have to say season seven so far is probably my favorite. Uh then probably season three. That I like Merle, I like what they did with the governor. I was so intrigued by the TV show version of The Governor. Uh, then, I like the stuff at Alexandria, so 5 was really good, 6 was good, 1, yeah, I put 1, then 4, and 2 might be my least favorite, but... I didn't go... So I'm really thinking that I was going to do my favorite seasons in this video, but that's just a rough assessment. Rough, quick assessment. So, I'm expecting action. I'm expecting to see the group at the sanctuary. And, you know, I'm expecting a fight by the end of the episode to start off. It's episode 100, it's big. The producers are saying that the first... Four episodes will make people crazy, break the TVs, things of that nature, so. We shall see. I'm ready for a big episode, and I can't wait. There's a two-hour Talking Dead afterwards. I might, probably going to have to record it, but I'm Definitely going to watch it. I've been ready for this for a while. And don't worry, I will get the fear videos out one video at a time. I will do episode 14 and then 15 and 16 as a combined. Because they just go right into each other. I watch it. Just seamless transition. So I'm hyped for a lot of stuff. I don't think we'll see a major character death right away. Maybe, though, maybe somebody like Tara. 
but I don't know. It's tough. It's really tough to call. And I wonder if we'll see a crossover. I'm wondering if we'll ever see somebody from Fear in The Walking Dead. Or if it will go from Walking Dead to Fear. So we still have that crossover coming. Probably won't happen this season. Maybe next season of Fear we'll see like Abraham or someone like that. Because remember, they're going to hit. Fear, you know, Houston's in play now at this point for some of the characters, so. You know, we know that Abraham was at one point in Texas. Now, was he in Houston? I'm not 100%, but he was in Texas. So there's a good bet that he can be the crossover character now that Fear has gone into Houston. Or that Houston is a, is a location within the Fear universe that. Spoiler alert, this Proctor John, who is the leader of this bike, biker gang, very similar to Sons of Anarchy, which, spoiler, might not be a spot, not really a spoiler at this point, but he played a, a assistant DA in Sons of Anarchy, so I like that. He's still kicking around, so we'll see what happens with him, Houston, what our group decides to do. Kind of really left up in the air what's going on so I think Abraham is the strongest possibility for a crossover character it would be great to see Michael Cutlets again that, that would be awesome I would like to see Morales again though probably even more so than Abraham because we've had less time with him than Abraham alright I think that's gonna just about do it I'm ready for a fight I'm ready for Crap to hit the fan, and the AMC approved the use of the F word, so we will see at least a few instances where Negan can swear away at least what, twice a season or something like that. I don't know. Fear used twice. I don't know what the exact limit is. Probably I think it's twice a season or something like that. All right. So tomorrow begins All Out War. It's going to be insane I'm just ready to see crap hit the fan and all that war has been it's one of my favorite storylines in the comics along with the governor story arc so I can't wait for it to show you know, unfold on, on the small screen like I said it's probably going to be the whole season and that's what it deserves. I can't see him stretching it into season 9, but it will at least take up season 8. I can't see it going taking any less than a whole season. So, I will have my reviews up, predictions as per usual. I'll have the fear ones up as well. Maybe I'll try and get something in tomorrow, I'm not sure, but I wanted to get this video out there today to get help get everybody, everybody hyped up about the premiere. I'm super hyped up. I know tomorrow I'll be wearing some kind of Walking Dead related outfit all day. It's going to be intense. We are going to war. I also would love to see the unadult, the, the uncensored version of that from the comics, that speech, because it's so much funnier in the comics. The TV show, they felt rushed, like they didn't want to cut, didn't want to take away from Maggie's speech about Glenn, which was nice, we needed it, but I want the full Negan going to war speech. So, with that being said, I think I'm going to cut this one here, and enjoy the premiere, everybody. Happy 100 episodes. Enjoy. Have a good one. Questions, comments, concerns, I'm here. This has been great. I love going on this journey with everybody, and we will see, hopefully we will see Jerry tomorrow. All right. Peace out. Deuces, everyone.